Namo Adidapha. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The second mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by exploitation, social injustice, stealing, and oppression, I vow to cultivate loving kindness and learn ways to work for the well being of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I will practice generosity by sharing my time, energy, and material resources with those who are in real need. I'm determined not to steal and not to possess anything that should belong to others. I will respect the property of others, but I will prevent others from profiting from human suffering or the suffering of other species on earth. For Dharma lessons, we've been reading Ajahn Ninda's book, Unexpected Freedom, and a chapter on being truly comfortable with a section on going against preferences. The practice of purification requires our coming to see the reality of preferences very clearly, and this inevitably involves a challenge of countering our desires. There needs to be a context of contentment for us to do this, but at the same time, Going against preferences is not going to be comfortable. It's important to understand this because when we apply ourselves to practices that challenge us and we feel unhappy or discontented, we can think that something is going wrong. I've many times quoted to people something I read in a book by Thomas Merton during my first years as a monk. As sometimes happens, hearing a description of the process one is involved in from the perspective of another tradition can bring about greater clarity. In his book, New Seeds for Contemplation, Thomas Burton writes, what a holocaust takes place in the steady burning to ashes of old worn out words, cliches, slogans, rationalizations. The worst of it is that even the apparently holy conceptions are consumed along with all the rest. It is a terrible breaking and burning of idols, a purification of the sanctuary so that no graven thing may occupy the place that God has commanded to be left empty, the center, the existential altar, which simply is." End quote. For contemplative life to deepen, we do, not, we do need to be willing to have our comfort challenged. Quote, let no one hope to find in contemplation an escape from conflict from anguish or from doubt. On the contrary, the deep inexpressible certitude of the contemplative experience awakens a tragic anguish and opens many questions in the depths of the heart like wounds that cannot stop bleeding. For every gain in deep certitude, there is a corresponding gro growth of superficial doubt. This doubt is by no means opposed to genuine faith but it mercilessly examines and questions the spurious faith of everyday life, the human faith, which is nothing but passive acceptance of conventional opinion." End quote. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Namo Adidafa. Thanks so much for joining me today.